course, the, the Waterloo Instruments comes with a huge, very expectant fan base. Uh, did you feel a real kind of pressure taking on this project? Um, no, I just set out to make the um, best possible movie I could make. Uh, I had a, a different entry into the movie than I think uh, I just wanted. I was really fascinated by this character, Clary Frey. Um, having a, an eight year old daughter myself, I think she needs to have some good role models. And this Clary character is a is a strong girl who figures things out on her own terms. She's not there because of the boys. She's not a damsel in distress. And I think that was just a great story to tell. And for me, it was never a young adult or this type of audience or this type of audience. I think um, movies like Harry Potter, uh, I, I can watch Harry Potter and be just as enthusiastic. It's not necessarily that you have to be a young audience member. Um, so I just really enjoyed the movie from, from that end. And then later, once I became a fan myself, I discovered that I was quite in sync with the fans. And instead of being pressured, I've just been really inspired by them. Whenever we go to these premieres and there's screaming fans, I mean, nothing is better than that. And then um, the, one of the more hardcore fan bloggers even wrote that this is the best book to movie adaptation ever. So you know, I think we, phew. <laughs> Because it must be quite difficult to try that balance and appealing and kind of to, to all of the kind of the fans of the of the, the books and kind of like pleasing them, so, so to speak, and yet sort of trying to um, appeal to new fans as well, to new people. Um, yes and no. I mean, like I said, I just um, I try not to think too much about uh, who's out there and what's out there. I try to go a little more from what I think is is a great movie and. Um, and then I think people will like it. Sometimes you, you, you can't just give the people what they want. They deserve so much better. Um, and uh, I think that approach, you know, working closely with Cassandra Clare, which I was very lucky to be able to do. I had her on speed dial, so I, <laughs> I guess I stalked her more than I should. And um, just, just by preserving what I think, respecting what people liked in the books and making sure the characters were true, uh, I always felt that we were on the right side of the fans. I mean, Cassandra's uh, writing is so um, sort of visual. Did that make it quite uh, kind of easier for you to bring it to, to the big screen? Yeah, it was, um, it was a great starting point. And then I could just massage it from then and on and, uh, and create these portals and the, the, the whole universe. It was important for me, to, though, to, to make it a little more like an old-fashioned movie. I was inspired by movies like The Exorcist and, you know, Indiana Jones, where they had a lot of in-camera effects. I shot the film on film, which these days seems to be a sensation. For me, that's a mystery, but... Uh, so it was already wonderfully visual. I just wanted to make sure that it felt real all the time. Uh, tell us about casting uh, Lily and Jamie because I mean they're both quite sort of quite young, relatively inexperienced. When when they, especially when they're first cast, uh, did that ever worry you? Or what's the decision? No, they never came across as uh, neither young nor inexperienced. <laughs> they were highly professional, and such great fun to be with. And and uh, I mean we dragged them through stunts and mud and dust and dirt and long hours. There was never any loss of energy or complaints. But what I think people will be mostly, uh, what I think you'll love seeing it is that how deep they go with their characters, both Jamie and and, um, and uh, Robbie and Lily, they're all, and Kevin, I mean, they all are really true emotionally, which I think is, there's no cheese or superficial stuff. And I think people will be surprised at that. And I read that you like to implement kind of props or kind of nods in the way of your football team. Yes. Your <laughs> yes. And I was looking for it in the water instruments and I couldn't find it. No, I know. Because the... Secret. I'm not going to tell you that because that's... And it's it's fascinating to me that Frederickstad Football Club now almost is a worldwide known <laughs> football club. They're a tiny, wonderful football club. Um, and I can't tell you because they are always looking for it and they're finding it so quickly back there that I have to hide it more and more each time. But it is in there. And you can launch your own competition if you want. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the time. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you.